and here you have your road all planned out. You know, with GPS, you know, they might pop always the best road. Have you ever ended up someplace you shouldn't have ended up because the GPS was wrong? I mean, sure, that happens too. But detours happen. All of a sudden, they're, they're, you didn't see this. The bridge is out. And the road, the police tell you another place to go. And we end up taking these detours. It appears it's going to be a better road. But it's real promising, but it finds out it's not very promising at all. Recently, when we were traveling, we decided to avoid New York City because we couldn't stand the traffic. And we took all these detours way off. And we're thinking, it would have been better to go to New York City. <laughs> you know the deal. Well, sometimes spiritually, we have detours as well. And Satan loves to offer spiritual detours. It appears that this is going to be the best way to go. But the truth of the matter is not. Jonah knew what a detour was when he went the wrong direction. Moses found himself detoured 40 years later. Well, in the book of Nehemiah, Satan worked through some guys to try to detour Nehemiah. The wall was almost finished in Nehemiah chapter 6. Uh, they had only thing left to do is to hang the gates and they would have been done. But Tobiah and Tobiah, they weren't very happy about it. And they said, hey, can we meet in the valley of Oni? And he said to them, uh, come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Oni. But they were scheming to harm me, so I sent messengers to them. In reply, I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I'm leaving it and to go down to you? And four times they brought the message to me. And all four times he said, no, I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to go down. So on the fifth time, they sent a letter. It was an open letter that anybody could read. And they could all gossip about it. You're planning a revolt. We know what you're trying to do. You're going to become king. We already know you're planning to appoint some prophets. And they're going to announce that we have a king in the land. Well, he said, you know that ain't true. That ain't true. Well, that didn't work out, so they tried one other thing. They said, you know, your life is in danger. You need to come into the temple and hide. And your life will be saved. Of course, you know what that was. They were going to plot to kill him. And he said to them, Should a man like me run away? Or should one like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. And I realized that God had not sent, I realized that God had not sent them, but he had prophesied against me because the Bayah and Dabat had hired him. I want you to understand that Satan loves to deter us. He loves to send people our way to influence us. He loves to get us off track of where we're going. When you have a destiny, you have a destiny you're trying to go to. When you make a plan, here's where I want to get to. Now, I understand there's going to be some weaving on the road, but the fact is you've got to keep your eye on the destiny and not get sidetracked. Your destiny tonight, if you're not a Christian, is it heaven? Do you have your eye on the goal of being with Christ? If you're not a Christian, you, what you need to do is you need to rise up and say no to Satan and say yes to God and keep going forward and make the greatest confession of all that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and make that decision to be baptized in Christ. Need to respond? Don't waver. Come right now as we stand to sing this song. All day long, the Jesus I am singing, in my song, the joy shall ever be. All the while, he keeps my heart a ringing, for his love is everything to me. He is my king, and no, oh, I dearly love him. He is my king, no other is above him. All day long, in rapture praise I sing. He's my king, dreams of love. 
notes before we dismiss. Thank you. We're praying for uh, Diana Dye, uh, daughter of Plez Dye, who uh, is at Riverside and uh, had some testing, uh, but they found out things are looking good. Maybe come home tonight or tomorrow. Uh, Ruth Ford, Diane Howard's mother, uh, at Shingles. Diane's still in Nashville, so we'll be praying for them. Carolyn Heimlich, who's still at Mary Manor, is that right, John? All right. And uh, Nancy Hemmer, who's at Riverside. That is Linda Rue's sister. Adam Medley is home after having uh, his tonsils out on Sunday. Uh, Charles White, Eric White's father, had open heart surgery yesterday at Riverside and remains there. Be praying for him. Michael Williams at Grand Hospital, uh, April Williams' son, and then also Maggie Willis, Craig and Diane Willis's daughter. Our sympathy is extended to Bob and Bonnie Godwin and their family at the passing of Bob's brother, Larry. Graveside service will be this Saturday in Marysville. Our sympathy is also extended to Bev Furness and her family at the passing of her grandson, Ryan Cox. Calling hours are Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. with the funeral to follow at the Edwards Funeral Home here in town. Men's Bible study tomorrow morning at Panera Bread at 7.30 for the men who can join us. Acts chapter 7 is the study. Don't forget, daylight saving time ends uh, early Sunday morning. Set your clocks back before going to sleep on Saturday. Uh, Sunday morning, be inviting your friends and family as we have for all of Friends Day. Worship remains the same, 8.30 and 11 o'clock. No class because of a pancake breakfast from 9.30 to 10.45. Uh, if you have a griddle, and you can bring that by Saturday to uh, so we can make uh, lots of pancakes, you can do that. Or if you want to help uh, cook pancakes and help with that, see me tonight. Seniors, uh, the Amazing Graves, you'll be going to the, your monthly luncheon on Tuesday at the Berwick in Green Camp. You need to sign up tonight or Sunday for that. Brian, lead us in prayer, please. All right, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your good blessings. Thank you that you have given us the opportunity to be here together tonight. Pray, Father, for those folks who are not able to be with us uh, for various reasons. We know that there were a number that were mentioned who ill, or recovering from uh, illness, we just pray that you would give them strength and be with them, and uh, we look forward to them uh, recovering, and uh, we pray your, your healing hand upon them. Be with those, Father, who are suffering losses in their families that were mentioned tonight, we pray that you would give comfort to them, as only you can do, Father, and uh, just help us to be encouraging to those our brothers and sisters who are dealing with those situations. Father, we, we thank you that we have opportunity to study your word. Help us never to forget how precious the gift is of having your word in front of us, Father, that we might be able to learn what you have in mind for us for us to know. Uh, be with uh, Matt as he leads us in the lesson tonight, and uh, we pray that you will bless those thoughts. Thank you, Father, for the love you've shown us. These things we pray in Christ's name. Teens are dismissed to Aubrey Center. Thank you. First Corinthians chapter 13, the guys will be handing out the uh, paper. First Corinthians chapter 13. on vacation, but even better to be home. Hated leaving the, the mid-80s with no humidity, but there's only so much Mickey Mouse you can take. <laughs> Not before another class. So a few weeks ago, we started this uh, series that we're calling The Greatest of These, and we're just dissecting uh, the majority of the middle of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we, we did, uh, I did the introduction, verses 1 through 3, a few weeks ago, 
And then last week, Russell uh, spent time on love is patient and love is does what? Not easily anger. And I even watched it and forgot. So tonight we're going to talk about love is kind, as you can see on your paper. 1 Corinthians 13, if you're there in your Bible, beginning in verse 4 through 8. Mark, if you've got that for us, please. Yes. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not durable or resentful. It, is, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. All right. Uh, now go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. As we focus on love is kind, the Bible teaches us that love is kind, and therefore kindness is important to us. And so we're just going to do this brief introduction through some of these passages. 2 Peter chapter 1. Dale, if you have verses 5 through 8, 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8, when you're there, please. All right. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Add to uh, perseverance and add to perseverance what? Brotherly love or kindness. All right. Uh, that's the promise in, in verse 8. For if, if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we develop these qualities, including kindness, our lives will be so much better. Now Galatians chapter 5, a very familiar passage. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Russell's got it. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against those things, there is no law. What is this passage teaching us? What's it teaching us? Fruit of the Spirit. All right, the fruit of the Spirit. And the first one is love. love. That's what we're concentrating on in this series. All right, what else does it teach us? Joy. All right, joy and peace, yeah. If we allow God's Spirit to work in us and on us, then we'll develop these positive characteristics, including kindness. One more, Colossians 3.12. Colossians 3.12. Colossians 3.12. Who's got that? Cindy Lewis? All right, go ahead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. That's great, but that's not Colossians 3.12. Oh. I like that verse. <laughs> Kindness, and if love is kind, 
then just what is kindness and what does it mean to be kind? What is kindness and what does it mean to be kind? Yeah, Jack? Serving others instead of yourself. All right, serving others and not yourself. What else does it mean to be kind thinking or show of, kindness? Thinking of others above yourself. All right, thinking of others way above yourself. Anybody else? Being nice to people. Being nice to people, okay. Not easily Not to be easily angered. All right. Well, in August, we celebrated, Cindy and I celebrated our uh, uh, 33rd wedding anniversary. And uh, so I decided that night, I went on an archaeological dig in our house and found this prehistoric thing that a lot of you know about. It's called a VHS tape because our wedding is on that. And, it, and, and we sat there thinking, wow, this is how we used to watch movies. Now we just dial it up on Netflix or you know Amazon Prime or something like that, some platform. And but remember going to Blockbuster or the video store and when you rented the tape, it had a sticker on it with three words. What were those three words? Be kind, Be kind rewind. And it was just something about that when you opened up that you got home and it was ready to go, you felt like, I should do that to, to the next person. But I'll confess, even on video, there were some times that I forgot or was too lazy to hit the button. Because back then you had to get up and walk over to the mammoth machine. <laughs> I see a lot of you now. Yep, right. Probably still in your basement, Dale, right? <laughs> All right, VHS. But you felt good about doing that. All right? Be kind, rewind. All right? Uh, but we live in a world that sometimes isn't kind. We live in a world of criticism, sarcasm, scorn. And as if people have forgotten to be kind to each other. Paul starts a description of love by saying, it is patient. See last week's class on the Richland Road YouTube page. And then he goes into love is kind. Kindness is love in action. It is love that is alive. It is love that is caring for other people. People. It's interesting to know that love has to do with our attitude, joy has to do with our emotions, peace has to do with our mind, patience has to do with our reactions, but kindness has to do with our behavior. Kindness is just not the way we feel towards others, but it's how we act towards them. A person who is kind-hearted but never acts on those feelings in their heart is actually not kind. The world needs more kindness. Your life needs more kindness. My life needs more kindness. And the people around us need more kindness. Amen. Well, let's look at three major things tonight on your paper. Number one, kindness and God is the first point. Kindness and and God. We want to look at what the Bible tells us about kindness and God. Here's your first uh, bullet point. God's kindness is part of his character. God's kindness is part of his character. In Exodus 34, 6, God proclaimed himself as the Lord. The Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. God's kindness has to do with his compassion, his grace, his love. There in Exodus 34, God presented himself to Moses as a compassionate and gracious God, abounding in love. The Hebrew word translated there for love 
is an important word relating to God in the Bible. It refers to his kindness. It refers to his mercy, to his faithfulness. We translate it sometimes as God's loving kindness. Psalms 136 uses the same word to describe God's character. Psalms 136 verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. You know the rest of the verse, right? His love, what? Endures forever. There the word translated love in that verse is the same word we find for God's loving kindness in Exodus 34. The amazing thing about Psalms 136 is that that psalm keeps repeating the description of God over and over. 26 verses we're told about God's loving kindness which endures forever. Number two, God's kindness leads us to repentance. God's kindness leads us to repentance. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Brian, you have that? Or when you get it? Romans 2, verse 4. Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? So when we hear of God's judgment, we often sometimes run the other way, don't we? But when we hear of God's kindness to us in the gospel, we're drawn to Christ and hopefully will lead us to turn from sin. But we need to be careful that we never take God's kindness for granted. That's why Paul later in the book of Romans, now go to chapter 11, real quickly, Romans 11. He'll caution us to consider both the kindness and the sternness of God. Somebody read for us Romans 11, 22. Romans 11, verse 22. Jack, thank you. Consider, therefore, the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will cut off. We're supposed to consider what here? God's kindness on one hand, that he's been kind to us, and God's what? Sternness. We're, we're to consider, Paul says, God's kindness and the sternness. Sternness of those who what? That fall away or fell. But kindness to you, provided that you continue in that kindness, otherwise you'll be... God's kindness leads to repentance. But don't take God's kindness for granted. Third of all here, Jesus' life was full of kindness. Jesus' life was full of kindness. Turn to Matthew chapter 9, if you will. Matthew chapter 9. The Bible shows us how Jesus' life was full of kindness. Jesus, the Son of God, who displayed all the fruit of the Spirit that we read earlier in his life. And we certainly see that when it comes to the fruit of kindness. Matthew 9, 36. Who wants to read that? John? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless. Like sheep without shepherd. Why did Jesus have compassion for the people? Why did he have compassion for the people? They were being harassed and they were helpless. Alright, they were being harassed or helpless, what John? Same thing. Same thing, okay. Anybody else? 
They, they were like, they were just wandering, like sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus turned his compassion into action. Think about, I just wrote down some things that I remember he did. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He touched the lepers. He taught the crowds. He took time with people. He sat and ate with sinners. And he even forgave those who crucified him. Now those are all wonderful acts of kindness, but the ultimate act of kindness was when Jesus laid down his life on the cross. Go to Ephesians chapter 1, if you will. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1, verse 7. Who's got that? Cindy, you got that now? I do. All right, thank you. <laughs> In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So the riches of God's kindness and grace were never more on full display than when Jesus gave his life for us. So are there any comments on the kindness in God, either with God's kindness as part of his character, God's kindness leads us to repentance, or Jesus' life was full of kindness? Any comments on those points before we move on to that? Kindness in God. Well, every quality that Jesus had was uh, a character of God. It was God. Yeah. So yeah. He proved, you know. He's showing the way, isn't he? Yeah, he's Proving who he is. He's showing. Yeah. What does it mean when you think about how kind God has been to us? The wrath of God. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. God could have shared his wrath on us. It's only because of his kindness that he does not rain his wrath on us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty amazing to think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though we deserve it. Anybody else? All right, number two tonight. Kindness and God's grace. Here's the second main point tonight. Kindness and God's grace. How will we look at the relation between God's... Now we'll look at the relation between God's kindness and grace. God's kindness and grace go together in God's word. When we consider God's kindness in relation to grace, several things come to the forefront. Number one, God's kindness is undeserved. God's kindness is undeserved. Go with me to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Now, we're just going to read this verse because I don't want to take any, uh, you know, good stuff away from uh, two Sundays from now when we get to Titus chapter 3 as we go through the shameless plug for Sunday mornings uh, through the Titus sermon series. God's kindness is undeserved. Russell Reed verses chapter 3, 4, and 5. Oh, in the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared, it's, he saved us. Not because of righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing, rebirth, renewal by the Holy Spirit. Alright. What did Jesus do? He saved us. What did we do? We obeyed. Huh? God said, obey. God said, yeah, we obey, but we, you know, we have to accept it and, and obey it. I mean, you know, he did it, yeah. right? The kindness that God has shown us to Christ was completely undeserved by us. Yep. In fact, it's the exact opposite of what we deserve. Yep. 
We did not deserve God's kindness, but rather his sternness, his punishment for our sins. Number two here, God's kindness is unearned. It is unearned. Go back with me to Ephesians, but chapter 2, we looked at verse 7 already. Now we're going to look at verse 8 and 9, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Got a reader for these when you get there. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. All right, I'm saved how? By grace. By grace. Through faith, not by myself, it's a gift of God. Not by works, no one can boast. It's something that is unearned. Number three, God's kindness should motivate us to be kind to others. It should motivate us to be kind to others. Matthew chapter 18 then. It should motivate us to be kind to others. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18, 33. What do I have on a paper? But you want this one too. <laughs> I have no idea where that 936 it came from. It came from above when you copied and pasted it. I did. Uh, where that came from? Uh, yeah, right, right from the first section. Yeah, correct. 1833. I was going to say something, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, yes. So, in the Old Testament, in the Old Law, there wasn't grace, what was there? Rituals, burnt offerings, sacrifices, the law, condemnation, checklist. Right, Nader? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then Jesus came and Miller, he flipped it all upside down, didn't he? Brought grace and mercy. Love. Okay. Brian, go ahead and read uh, Matthew 18, 33, because Jesus is going to sum up the parable of the unmerciful servant with these words. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? Shouldn't you have had mercy on someone else as I have had on you? Wow. Can you, I mean, I can just picture Jesus dropping the mic. You know? I mean, just getting to the heart of it. Because God's been merciful to us, we have the obligation to be merciful to others. We shouldn't be kind to others simply out of obligation. We should desire to be kind to others because we want to be like our Heavenly Father. Turn to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke 6, verse 35 and 36. Luke 6, 35 and 36. All right, Jack, you got your hand up. I love your enemy. Whoa, whoa, what? Love your enemy. Who? Your enemy. Your enemies. <laughs> love them? Yeah. Hate them? Love, love, love them. them. All right, go on. I love your enemies. Do good to them. And love to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the most high, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. What's Jesus getting at here? Sum it up. Don't retaliate. Don't retaliate? Okay. Love others, even though they're vile, sinful, and Love them. It says act like a father. He says you'll be sons of 
the most high if you do this. Because who does this? God does. Yeah. And if we do it, we'd be like God. We'd be like, God. Yeah. We'd be like the Father. Yeah. I like the phrase, he's, un- he's kind and ungrateful. Uh huh. And wicked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but our reason for being kind is not because they're ungrateful and wicked, it's because we're going to please our Father. So Brian and Russell stole the thunder as children of our Heavenly Father. We should be kind to others, not simply out of obligation, but because God is kind to others, and we want to be like our Father. So again, verse 36, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. So are there any comments on... The kindness and God's grace, either that kindness is undeserved, or it's unearned, or it should motivate us to be kind towards others. Any comments on those points? Sometimes it's hard to be kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yes. If I look at the person, what he has done to me, and I'm thinking about me, Be very kind to you. Yeah. That's why you've got to look at it a different way. I, I think what we're what we've hit here in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 is where the rubber meets the road. This is the stuff that we work on and work on day after day after day. That love is ba 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 ba. All right, growing in kindness. Oh, wait, Roger, go ahead. Sorry, sir. Uh, I think of, often think of Ignatius, who was a disciple of John, and when the Romans came to get him, to take him to the arena to burn him at the stake, he set a banquet table in front of his enemies, in front of the Romans, and they sat down to eat before they left with him. And then when he got to the arena, he asked for an hour of prayer before they tied him to the stake and set the fire and burned him to death. That's kindness. Yeah. Good. So we'll finish up with growing in kindness. <coughs> I'm going to give you, we're going to look at five things as we close to help us start growing in kindness right away. Number one, consider God's kindness to you in Christ. Consider God's kindness to you in Christ. Paul in Ephesians 2 verse 7 speaks of the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Was there ever a love like God that sent His Son into the world to die on the cross for our sins? Was there ever a love like God that sent His only Son to die in our place? God's word says no. There's no love or kindness that ever begins to compare. So when we consider God's amazing kindness extended to us in Christ, that should motivate us to be kind to other people. Paul was saying in Ephesians 4, 32, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, forgave you. That's why we should be kind and compassionate, because we've been forgiven by God. Number two, give sacrificially to those in need. Give sacrificially to those in need. Paul in 2 Corinthians 8 writes about the Macedonian church who gave generously to others in need, even though they were in great need themselves. Their giving was not only generous, but it was Sacrificial. Paul follows that up by pointing out to us the sacrifice Jesus made for us on the cross. 2 Corinthians 8 9, he writes, For for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus gave himself for us. As God's people, we should give sacrificially, if we can, to those in need. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 3. 
1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, 17 and 18. First John chapter 3, 17 and 18. Mark's got that. He says, go for it. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and, and in truth. So what, play, what takes place when we give sacrificially to those in need? What takes place? When we give sacrificially to those in need. Verse 16. All right, go ahead. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down or set aside our lives for our brothers. Yeah. Yep. That's how we do it. Yep. When we can help those in need, I think we model ourselves after Jesus and we continue to grow in his kindness and his love. But it always doesn't have to be financial giving. We grow in the fruit and, and love of kindness anytime we can sacrifice money, our time, our talents in helping those in Number three, speak a kind word to someone. Speak a kind word to someone. I went for coffee uh, Monday late in the afternoon because, you know, come after vacation, you're tired more for some reason. Uh, maybe it was walking the six million miles a day at the parks. Uh, don't know. But I said hello to a lady at going out at Panera. I was going in, she was coming out, said, you know, hello, let me hold the door for you. And she said, wow, thank you. No one has talked to me yet today. And then she just kept going. I hadn't even got to this part of the lesson yet, you know, like, wow. I just trying to be nice and, you know, say something to her, you know, but speak a kind word to someone. Some people might go all day or all week or all month without anyone saying a kind word to them. Proverbs 12, 25, an anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. We have no idea what disappointments, we have no idea what discouragement people's are, people are struggling with in their lives. We can either add to their burden with a discouraging word, or we can speak a kind word in the midst of what they're going through, and hopefully lift them up. What does a kind word cost? Nothing. Nothing. Number four, remember God's promise for those who are kind. Remember God's promise for those who are kind. We saw Jesus' words earlier from Luke, where he said to love your enemies and do good to them without expecting anything back. We should not expect to get anything back from others, but expect to receive back from the Lord, because his promise is to reward those who are kind. Proverbs eleven seventeen: a kind man benefits himself, but a cruel man brings trouble on himself. Proverbs 19, 17, he who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward him for what he has done. And then Hebrews 6, 10 says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your works and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Then number five, ask God to develop the fruit of kindness in your life. Ask God to help develop the fruit of kindness in your life. That's why we spent time in Galatians 5 at the beginning looking at the fruit of the Spirit. As we develop love, then we develop kindness as well. So any comments on growing in the kindness either in considering God's kindness to you in Christ, giving sacrificially to those in need, 
uh, speaking a kind word to someone, remembering God's promise to those who are kind, or asking God to develop kindness in you. Yeah, Dave. When you do kind things, you receive joy in your heart. Yeah. Makes you happy. Yep. That's the blessing of it. Yeah. This is one of those things that's easy to think about, but really hard to do consistently. But it's a good reminder. Yeah. Yeah, Jack. I understand the fun, Jay, and thank you. God will sure reward you for it. Yeah. Yep. Whether it's paying forward at the drive through for the next person or paying a little bit for the next person. I mean, you know, that was huge after that book, The Random Acts of Kindness, came out. Uh, going next door and raking somebody's leaves. It's a random act of kindness. All kinds of things. Were you going to say something? I just find it fascinating that throughout the scriptures, there's so many scriptures, but you got even the apostles who are different in their letters emphasize some of the same things. It's just yeah. sometimes we miss it. It's just like you said earlier, this is the tough stuff. Oh it is. It is. So we need to realize that kindness is powerful. Mm -hmm. Frederick William Faber once said kindness has converted more sinners than zeal, eloquence, or learning. Amen. Mark Twain said Kindness is a language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. And Thomas Kempis wrote, Kind words have a power which seems to be beyond natural causes, as if they were some angel song which lost its way and came to earth. Love is... So let me close with this before we pray. If the election next week doesn't go for your party, be kind. Amen. When at the store in a long line, be kind. When at the bank, getting coffee, picking up your dry cleaning, driving through a school zone, going up and down your neighborhood street, be kind. When you come home or when you come Sunday morning, and someone, a friend of someone is sitting in your pew, be kind. <laughs> when there's a long line for pancakes and sausage links, be kind. When your spouse, your children, or your dog have gotten on your last nerve, be kind. When serving the Lord, be kind. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your kindness, yes. that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. Help us to be kind and patient and all the attributes that we're gonna study in this great study in 1 Corinthians 13. And as we chew on it, and as we wrestle with it, and as we take two steps forward and four steps backwards, some days with it. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that you show us so that we can show others. As we leave tonight, keep us safe and bless us. We pray in advance for all the friends and family that will come Sunday morning to hear the saving news of Jesus Christ for their life. Thank you, Father, for the fruit that might come because of them hearing the good news. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you. Next week, love is something. Whatever the next one is. Come and find out. Have a good week.